Hi guys, how's it going? I'm Allison. Welcome. If you're new here, welcome back. If you're returning, hope that you guys are doing well. I already said that, didn't I? So today I'm going to be sharing how to optimize our healing and accelerate our resilience for now, for tomorrow, for all the time, but especially for those of us watching in real time, for those of us talking in real time, <laughs> for the end of 2020, the rest of the year. Every year when October hits, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're down to the last quarter. Like, whew, there's this exciting pressure to put into action everything that I've learned and really make the most of things. And so I just want to share some thoughts that I have with you about how we can make the most of the rest of our months of the year and of our lives. So the first thing that I want to say is super important all the time, and that is to remember that the weight of your family and of the world is not yours to carry. I know super hard things have happened in the past and we may want to make them better. We may want to make the person who it happened to in that moment feel better, in the past moment feel better now, and we may be angry that people were hurtful in the past and we may want to punish them now or have harbor, harbor resentment against them uh, I encourage you guys today to pick that up off of your chest. <sighs> Just set it down. It's not yours to carry anymore. You just let it go. You don't need to carry that weight on your shoulders, on your heart, on your gut, uh, in your mind, wherever it is in your body. <sighs> let it go. Let it go. It's okay. The people in your life are safe. They're gonna be okay. And you're gonna be okay too. And it's not your responsibility to make sure that everyone else is okay and all of the things, all of the things that are coming to your mind, just let it go. Okay, so the second thing that um, is relevant for making the most out of our time is to learn how to think about these past hardships and not get absorbed and lost in thinking about them or do everything in our power to avoid thinking about them. So one thing that I've been noticing a lot in certain individuals in my life is a feeling to come up and rather than sit with it, do something. Reach out to someone, which can be a super great route to go, you know, seeking support. But there is a time when it turns into dissociating from learning how to sit with yourself and then reinforcing the weakness, you know, <laughs> that is the ability and capacity to sit with ourselves and with our feelings and with our memories and with all of the sensations and all the things. So that's one thing, but other things are like compulsions, the self-sabotage that I was talking about a few videos back. Um, there's hypervigilance, like worrying about other people's needs, like turn, going into fixer mode. Um, there's collapse, there's all these different things and they are all kind of us either being completely drowned in or running away from our feelings. These feelings and all of the things that we do to drown in them or avoid them We gotta learn how to live with them. And I don't mean get lost here, because the next thing that I'm gonna say is how to move forward, you know, and change. But um, right now, I think a great balance that I personally neglect because I'm so focused on moving forward and I'm personally like, I don't know, in a okay spot. Um, when hard feelings come up though, I do tend to try to avoid them. So something that I'm going to practice and everyone else could practice is being more aware of when a feeling is coming up, not even cognitively, but like if I'm feeling some weird sensation in my body or like I walk into a room and someone's standing there and my energy, my demeanor changes, like recognize that and then allow it to be whatever comes up without even like thinking like, just allow it to be because a lot of the times if that happens we immediately are like 
oh, I don't want this to be the case. Like an example of walking in a room or like seeing somebody that maybe you like and like they make you a little bit nervous. Like you don't want to like crawl into a cave of yourself and then you get hard on yourself for doing that and you're like, ah, oh, I wish that what is, is would be different, you know? I'm not accepting what reality is and what I feel. And that's just not a way to become like this person who doesn't feel those ways, you know? Um, it's just not the route to that ultimate point B that we are trying to get to. So instead, like, making a practice of when feelings come up, memories come up, recognizing them, recognizing when you're approaching this cliff, and then rather than jumping off the cliff into drowning in our emotions or like mad, trying not to, <laughs> um, allowing, allowing that feeling to be. Learn to nurture ourselves and sit with our feelings as hard as that will be in the beginning. We are in an uncomfortable comfort zone right now of avoiding our feelings or being lost in them completely and doing these different behaviors to cope that helped us survive it at one point in time and so they're not i don't want to demonize these different things that we do to make ourselves feel better but there's the uncomfortable comfort zone of feeling completely lost in this pain or avoiding the pain which is painful in itself that we can be in or there's the uncomfortable comfort zone that we can take that is feeling our feelings and moving beyond them which is what i'm going to talk about here next to find a new comfort zone that is comfortable so what i'm saying is uncomfortable about that route is change change in general is uncomfortable that's why we are still doing the things that we're doing even though they aren't serving us anymore they're outdated they were learned and conditioned and survival mode not thrival mode you know <sighs> so change is uncomfortable but uh i think it's the better route don't you wouldn't you rather make it to that new place than stay where you are now so i recommend just this has been an elaborate way to say learn how to feel your feelings and sit with them rather than try to avoid them and run like heck away from them because they are there inside of you. Um, one last quick metaphor that I want to share before moving on is Jay Shetty spoke with Rachel Brayton, who's aka Yoga Girl, on a podcast. It was brilliant. But um, she, he, meow. Um, what was I going to say? He said that us running up from our feelings is like us putting our trash on the curb every week. And the garbage man coming and taking it away and we don't think about it anymore but the trash piles out in the world are getting bigger you know they're not in our conscious sight all the time and we continuously just put our trash on the curb but out in the world more trash is accumulating and so we gotta recognize that those trash piles exist within us and actually look at those and feel those rather than just continuously like add to them subconsciously okay guys another thing that's relevant to our healing my third tip a for you is to talk with your hands more just kidding um my third tip for you guys is to take a look at those lists of needs and um even a more condensed list of needs listed here and wonder what it is you really want and how you're going about getting them so for instance it is an impulse of ours to when we feel ignored by someone perhaps ignore them back or lash out at them it's just an impulse we're like oh like you ignored me and now i'm mad at you but what we really want and need in that moment when we are upset that someone didn't communicate with us and prioritize us and see us and talk to us. They ignored us. What we really want is connection. That's what we want. And so we are 
doing a roundabout job, a complete actual in the wrong direction job of meeting that need when we respond by ourselves ignoring them or lashing out and causing a conflict. I mean, we didn't cause it, but we definitely like, it takes two to tangle, you know, we uh, involved ourselves in it. And so, for instance, if you really want connection, like recognize what you're feeling, like I talked about in that last point, and then how do we nurture that? And we have all of these impulses and old unhealthy patterns that we learned and that are just, I don't know, for some reason, like natural for us to think to do, but they actually don't serve to meet our needs that we have and that will continuously not get met if we continuously do them. So instead, for instance, with this example of wanting communication and care and connection, we ought to be vulnerable and communicate our feelings and our needs and we can use the list that I provided below to do that and it's practice and you won't be perfect every time we're gonna make mistakes forever but and so will other people in our lives and we ought to give them grace and ourselves grace but next time that we for example want connection instead of saying like you didn't communicate with me and now I'm mad at you <laughs> Say you didn't communicate with me and I really want to connect with you and I'm feeling really hurt and deprioritized and I know that this may sound silly because we maybe talk all the time but in that moment I was feeling a little bit insecure and a little bit sad and I would love to connect now and that person will probably meet with a more positive response to that than were you to say you know, whatever it is you would have said um, had you just gone and been, been mad or like just ignored them in response. They probably wouldn't have even known then that you wanted connection because you ignored them too and they were probably like, oh cool, this is how things are. I'm like, all right. And then there's all these different needs and um, like all these different examples that I could say. But for me personally, I realized that and you know, I took a poll on YouTube. I think a lot of us, like the thing that we need most is connection. And then another thing that we need is safety. And so, yeah, there's a whole nother story about doing this communication style with people who are very narcissistic and toxic. And I think I should make a whole video on that. But, um, yeah, for now, I, you know, I think that's going to segue into my next point, which is to say that if you are tied and then matched with someone who is toxic none of this is gonna matter like I hate to break the news to you but the only reason I'm able to be well today is by distancing myself it doesn't have to be forever it doesn't have to be like it's just so hybrid for every unique person and situation for some people forever definitely like but if that's the case, you think, and you're still in a relationship with this toxic person, maybe in your family, then why are you still there? Like, and recognize that you can't be there. You can't continue to be in that relationship that continuously makes you feel bad, terrible, and judges you and doesn't allow, like allow you to feel your feelings and process anything and speak for your needs. And, you know, that's, it cannot thrive doing that so a lot of people comment on this one video that I made about how to move out from a narcissistic parents house and they say I can't for whatever reason their parents won't let them get the front of a job whatever and what I say to that unfortunately is I can't help you no one can unless you change your mind because you can, it's possible. And I know there's gonna be a billion people saying, but, but if you are saying to yourself, I can't move out, what do I do? Like, apparently there's nothing that we can do, that anyone can do, because you're saying that you can't. And that is a learned mindset, and it's not true. And so you have to change your mind and realize that you can, and if there's a will, there's a way, as corny as that sounds, but you gotta actually, 
believe that you can do something and then do it because otherwise none of this is going to matter so that's a step <laughs> that's the first hard truth that i'm going to say like to make any progress in your journey at all there has to be boundaries and distance from toxic people and a new supportive system in your life a foundation built on actual care and integrity and so to get there if you're wondering how to get there a couple of things that i have to share with you guys are to build up these skills that i'm sharing with you guys of letting go of the weight of the world of allowing yourself to feel how you feel and nurturing yourself communicating your needs and just you know becoming more in tune with them rather than like our impulses and our reactions feeling our feelings and recognizing where they come from what need isn't being met and then also recognizing what you want like not even just escaping this toxic relationship but like resilience beyond that like how would you feel fully fulfilled like does it mean having a partner who is just you guys are madly in love and friends who you guys can talk about anything with and like do anything with like get together and just be so fun and wild and weird or is it a job a particular job that you want is it a house like is it material things what is it and again i think they come from needs that you want but like in an ultimate universe what do you want and really strive for that another corny phrase that's true is if you reach for the moon you'll at least land among the stars you know and some people i think are just reaching for like the next door you know like if they're in a home that they don't like they're reaching for like just another home but like reach for the stars and then just like what I have to say about that is have macro patience with micro speed. So <laughs> have patience that you're gonna get there because we're living in a world of instant gratification. We want something, we want a distraction. Oh, hey, look, I'm out of coffee. I'm gonna go get myself another cup of coffee. <laughs> um, but, you know, resilience takes time. Reaching our goals takes time. Have patience, have faith that you'll get there, but have micro speed. Today, make a to-do list and get it done. Do it. They can be little too, because for me, it's hard to even just take care of act activities of daily living sometimes, those ADLs, um, because trauma, it makes life hard. It really does. And so if your to-do list is to do laundry and buy the cats more food, Get those things done and give yourself a pat on the back. Say, good job. We are two steps closer <laughs> towards whatever it is that we want, which is consistency maybe and <sighs> safety. If we need safety, like those little things are adding to our safety. Okay, so um, <clears throat> yeah, what I want to say last is to balance this um, striving for our goals for thriving striving to thrive with this allowance and this acceptance every day because if we are striving continuously and just focusing on our ambition that's great because it will take us places and if we are just completely in allowance it will kind of hold us back but if we have a nice balance between the two this allowance of ourselves however we are whatever it is with like this pushing to get forward we will make progress so that's all i have to share today i will be back so much more i promise it's been a crazy summer and a crazy september but i am available to make more videos and share more with you guys uh, so stay tuned stick around hit the bell if you want to get notified when I get new videos, please subscribe if you haven't already. A lot of people comment and I can see that you're not subscribed and it would just be awesome if you took the time to go bloop and hit subscribe. It just tells YouTube that I'm cool and to bring other cool people and watch my videos, you know what I mean? So if you liked this video and gained anything from it, please do those things. It really does support me and support others.
in their journey. It does. So I am going to go once again. I'll probably say that again in like four seconds. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to go. <laughs> I hope you guys have a good day and learn something. So have a good rest of the year. All right, peace out, y'all.